the hip bones connected to the ale bone. Sure. Close enough. We got it. Uh, hey, Nick. Hello. Welcome back. Uh, more office hours. Up, we're here again. It's Friday and we're doing the thing that we do every Friday. Yes. It's called office hours. 2.30 p.m. Pacific time. Every week. Got to get that right. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, so welcome to the show. If you are new, hello. Thank you for joining us so much. Um, this is a fun show where we help you level up your creative careers. And Nick, what are we doing in this season of the show? We're on episode like 60-something, season six, yes. I think. What is this season all about? If you can't tell from all the cool stuff around us, we are back to school this season. And we are taking courses and classes that you would typically have taken probably in junior high or high school, right? Yeah. And turning them into uh, kind of creative related topics and showing you how design and creativity kind of play in all of these different fields. And uh, today's a good one. Thought it was going to be another stretch, but I think this might be, oh, no pun intended, with the stretch because that might oh, be coming up later. This episode that. will be a stretch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there is stretching involved yes, yes and but, we're uh, saying that because today we're talking about kinesiology what? what how did we get qualified to teach this Nick, do you know what kinesiology <laughs> is i believe it's the study of the body anatomy like the architecture yeah, it's like, the yeah i think it's like body movement we should we should have asked our special guest probably should have defined like that. what is kinesiology but i'm pretty sure that it's body stuff so we're going to be talking all about yeah. kinesiology uh, and specifically how every piece of the body has to work together to function just like in design how every piece of a brand system has to work together so today we're talking about brand systems yeah. we're also going to be giving you um some very special tips at the end we have a special guest coming on to talk about sitting at your desk how to stay healthy um, and how to make the most out of your body when you're working uh which is gonna yes. be fun but nick before I we get it was there, funny too oh, oh go ahead. i was gonna say looking up some of the stuff today it's funny everything had words and terminology that really do sound like the parts of the body. And it was kind of interesting how connected both design and this topic is. So like I said, not a stretch, right? It's real. Um, <laughs> and Nick, we have something to show that I don't think that we're going to talk about just yet. Um, yes. I, oh, here we go. Uh, we Mock, kinesiology is the scientific study of human or non-human body movement. I was right. Yes. Ah, the movement. Yes, I the think movement. That's, that's great. All that's right. what we focus on today. So this probably. is something, y'all, that we can't quite talk about yet. We're going to talk about it probably at the end of the show. But, like, this might be a thing that's happening. Yeah. I wonder. Wait, uh, that's not just the. That's a little huh. different. I don't know what that is. Wow, that looks interesting. There's to the max. We should we should I have more know. conversations about that later. Um, so maybe we should. Yeah, we, stick, we might fill you in. Stick around for the end of the show. We'll be talking more about what we're doing um, in the next month or so. Maybe in a couple weeks. Uh, we have got some awesome, awesome content coming for you. We have a ton of awesome content coming for you. Yeah. Um, but with that, Nick, we do have a special guest at the end today, uh, which is a good chunk of our show. And so let's go ahead and hop in and talk through brand systems and talk about how kinesiology relates to design. Right? Perfect. Let's get this into it. Let's do it. Look, All look right. at this. So, Lisa, we're like great, good teachers. We're going right in. Right? No announcements. But there, there have been comments on our YouTube videos where people are like, do they ever stop talking? And like nine minutes in is when they start the lecture. Here we are. This is for you, person on YouTube. Um, all right. Let's hop in. And the first thing that you need to know is that your body is a brand system. <laughs> it's, it's a weird what? thing to say. It's a weird thing to say, but like it is. every piece of your body has to work together so that everything works correctly. And that happens with brand systems. And so Nick's, Nick and I are going to talk a lot about the brand systems. And then we have a special guest, uh, Dr. Amy Miller, uh, coming on at the end of the show to talk all about your body. So let's hop yes. in, Nick, and talk about brand systems. What is a brand system? What is that even? So this is what I think I do primarily most often. This is kind of cool. So I love talking about this as well. The brand system is how you design elements that work together to visualize that brand. And it's almost like we talked about case studies being chapters of a book. These to me, I feel like when you break down a brand, you can look at them as small little chapters that make up the brand. It's all the visual visualization coming together. This line cracked me up because again, it works so great with our topic. It's a strong, strong one is a backbone of a solid corporate identity. So you can't have that communication, you can't have a solid commu like um, 
corporate identity without a brand system that works yep. and is super strong. And so if you think of it as that backbone, it really is the supporting feature. Yeah, I like to think of brand systems as a visual language. You've probably heard me say that before, uh, a visual language, right? That it's it's uh, the way that you communicate visually. And just like, you know, in Lord of the Rings, they speak Elvish and they have like this dialect that they've written and created. It's like that, but we're doing it for visuals. We're creating a visual language yes. for that. Yes. So also it's a brand system it's a collection of the design elements that together make that meaningful unit. And I know too that here's the best tip I can say with this. For a lot of young designers that are just producing logos and maybe getting you know a small dollar amount for a freelance business or something like that, these brand systems are how you can take that and elevate it to something greater and bigger, which is so cool. It's like a way of kind of expanding what a typical logo project could be, turn it into a logo system, oh. and you got it made. Yep, sorry everyone, I, I definitely yeah. hit the wrong thing. I realized that I stepped open that was bit. slowing my computer and then didn't realize it was going over there. <sighs> We're and, live. And last but not least, last but not least, you take all these elements, you combine them together, and you've created a communication that speaks in one consistent voice. I was doing that this morning with some students. We were talking about brand voice, and no one kind of really understood what that was. But if the brand was speaking, if the brand had a persona, if the brand was a personality, all these things combine together and keep it consistent. You know when you go into a Starbucks or like a McDonald's in another country or somewhere far, far away from home, the consistency of that brand is there. And it's not a carbon copy. It's always something somewhat different, but there's that common thread. Yep. So that's brand systems working really great. Uh, speaking of, have you ever seen the McDonald's in green or in blue? Yes. Where's so the green one? I, th um, I think the green one, I think the UK and I think blue might be Australia. Um, but it's interesting that there is a system yeah. for that, that their colors are different in different countries. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. So with that, where we talked about, we talked the second point here, right? That a strong brand system is a backbone of corporate identity. And like, I'm throwing so much shade every time I talk about this, but when something is off, it kills the whole thing, right? So if you yeah. have a slipped disc in your back, your entire body is going to feel terrible, right? If you have a cramp in your finger and you're trying to work, your whole hand is not gonna work correctly. Uh, and this is the greatest example that I have. Man, I feel so bad for whoever did this because I trash them all the time. Uh, this is the best example I have of a brand that has something off, that they have an injury to the body of their brand system. It is Coldwell Banker. If you guys haven't seen this, I can't show the video here because we'll get a copyright strike, but they have a reveal video of their new branding and it has a lot of this. It has like the like fashionable women, like they like walk mm -hmm. through the doors and there's like a fire breather and a skydiver and it's... It's something that to me, when we think of Coldwell Banker, it's homes and families and like that's the language. And this is yeah. like somebody like taking a bat to your rib cage, right? That yes. every bone in this body of a brand system is somehow broken. And so when something small yeah, is call, off. Call 911. Yes, exactly. And I mean, this was a small <laughs> thing, right? The, the logo, sure. Like, why not? The color, sure. Why not? But the imagery, which is one small piece of this brand system, one little thing was off. And it was like one of the worst reviewed that I'd seen. Like it was on yeah. blogs. It was the, the hot town of design talking about how bad it was because of the way that it was presented. So if you were building a brand system. It, did they change it? I don't did they think change so. it at all? I don't think they, so. They are keeping it. They're not pulling a gap and like well, going backwards. That's the thing. The logo and brand, sure, fine. Why not? Like whatever. But the mm, way that they presented yeah. it was like, what? Yeah. Um, so yes, yeah. if you if you miss something, it's going to throw off that whole thing. And it's like having an injury that it has repercussions in different ways. But let's yes. talk about brand systems for UI UX because there are different kinds of brand systems. And I've just recently started yes. to learn this language a little bit better. Yeah, and UI UX, for sure, this is where it has to be consistent and cohesive, but it also has to be effective, workable, and usable as well. I think MailChimp is one of the best ones I've seen in quite a while. Um, a lot of these are featured on a lot of the design blogs. You can see most recently, I believe it was um, Dropbox did one, and Skillshare just changed theirs as well. And you see how it works not only in print and where they're showing it in kind of just brand standards, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but the system has to work just as good here because it is a usable space. Yep. So those components have to be flexible for any screen, any dimension, any orientation. And I think in most cases that feels like you might be pulling back a little bit, right? Like 
I have to design a lot less, but they've done a great job here. And this is a yes. great example. And it's more about designing the system than it is designing the look when it comes to this. Yes. It's how do you use yeah. it? And I think that Adobe actually just did this a couple years ago um, with XD. They built out a full system of how their brand system functions within apps, within navigations, yeah. and they started to work on that. And so it, it is oh, interesting that right. seems to be a thing with larger companies going and figuring out what is this brand system that continues across all platforms and not just how it looks, but also how it functions, how it sounds, how yeah. it feels, all those details. Yeah. And you're, again, you're guiding the, the client or the customer through this. And those are things you should know about too, because that could, some of your design could get limited because of the usage there. Yep. Here's a great example of brand kind of brand consistency in a brand system. And I love seeing umbrella brands that have multi units underneath them. And Google's a perfect example. And you can see how they've taken that throughout the whole process. And I think they've even updated it since then. But what's nice is this feels like a family, yet every single one's totally different. Colors are the same, geometry is the same, kind of approach and kind of tact are very much the same as well. So it works in a brand system just as well. Yep, and again, it's that idea of language, right? That we're defining what the nouns, the verbs, the prepositional phrases are by using colors, yes. shapes, and then you just reiterate those to make new sentences. And it sounds like you're, I mean, visually, like you're speaking the same language because there are things with colors, with shapes, uh, with orientation, all of those details are speaking the same language visually, which is awesome. Love it. Yeah. Um, really cool. And in print, let's talk about that because that is a brain system is a much bigger thing when it gets to print. I think digital, it yeah. can be very streamlined. Print, I feel like, gets really complex really quickly. Oh, yeah. And here's a perfect example with The Guardian. And I love this one, too, because no two slides here are the same yep. and yet there is a common thread there's a consistency i think in the treatment of having things at different angles and having things kind of toss and turn that's part of the system and it works on some pages and then on other pages where it needs to be grounded a little bit more foundation like the first one it really works just as well too yep. i think it adds a playfulness as well like if that's part of your brand essence or your ethos that can be implemented into things like this on how things are positioned and placed um, so that that attitude, those little traits that you've already discovered from discovery, have them be physical pieces of that system and it works beautifully. Yep. And what I always love to do in pitch meetings is like I'll sit down and someone will, you know, pitch this kind of stuff to me or, you know, want creative feedback or whatever. I always ask, what's the thing? Like, what's the thing? What, mm -hmm. what is the thing? Yeah. And brand system is, that is the thing. If you're not able to communicate, you know, you've made this crazy awesome brand system, it's robust, it has all these different things. And I come down and I'm like, so what's the thing? If you're not able to define yeah. that, that's the core of what a brand system should be. And so I love when I was looking at this, that I was like, I think the thing here is like motion. Is, is, is movement yeah. and kind of like elasticity with stuff that the numbers are kind of having this like bounciness, the different articles have kind of this falling into place kind of thing. And I think that when you look at something in a very complex brand system, you should be able to communicate very clearly what is the thing, one sentence to sum yeah. this up. Yeah, I love that. I, I ask that question all the time with clients. It's just the best way to get the nucleus out and use it in graphics, use it in elements just like this. Too. Yep, absolutely. And someone just nice. said something over in chat that I think that we should talk about. And that is oh, yeah. uh, our very special, very awesome Discord right over here. Discord. So you can see uh, discord.gg slash AAC, ACC, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> that's the place to be. And you can hang out. You can look at the homework from last week. We did some charts and graphs last week um, to give you some homework. This week's homework is going to be very interactive and very fun. But there also is a classroom chat channel right here that you can hop into to do voice chat. And you can talk to your friends um, while we are on the air. You can do commentary. You can get connected, which we have another very special announcement about that coming up for next week as well. Next week's going to be a, a show like we've never done before. So so stick around yeah. again. We have more announcements at the end, but I wanted to talk about that. You can go hop over in there, hang out with Elizabeth and Nick uh, during the show and uh, yeah, make some commentary as we continue on here. All right. Please do. Back to design systems. <laughs> uh, let's talk about everything. Brand systems exploding and kind of expanding into all medias, all places, uh, mm. which is probably daunting to think about as a designer, right? You're like, I have to think about all the things. Yeah. Exactly. And this is, I think this is what makes it so exciting is because this is limitless. This tells me 
the scope of my project can get bigger and bigger and bigger as I do some branding with a project. Here's Airbnb. You can see it lives outside. It lives on billboard. It lives in patterns. It lives in even different interpretations over there on the right. All these different ways the logo can be represented. I love seeing it in like retail and in lifestyle shots and things like that. So to me, this shared library helps truly define it. And like the line says, it preserves and improves the customer experience with the brand. I was just saying to someone the other day, if you're picking up a brand new product off the shelf and you've never tried it before, almost 100% of your decision is based on the design and you want to improve, preserve that decision and it's the customer experience. Here's a perfect example. Think of Airbnb. They really don't have stores. They don't even physically exist. So we need a very good brand system like this yes. to think, to, just to consider who they are, right? Yep. I love stuff like this that like, it's not a thing. Like there is nothing that this is. And somehow they have such mm -hmm. a strong brand that it's like, what are you, what are you selling? You don't, you don't actually have a yeah. product. Like you just brand yourself really well that it's a service, but like, it seems like do they sell homes. Like, no, are they like selling trips? No, like there isn't a thing where they've sold it so that even as a consumer, I can talk about Airbnb. I know how to communicate with Airbnb. I can use their language because it's all a part of that brand system. Yeah, you can't refer them to go to go there and experience the store or the retail experience. It's not there. Yep. Right. So you're right. How do you, how do you as a consumer refer it? Here's great. Here's great content for you to have a yep. visual and know how how to recognize it. If I'm driving around in San Francisco, oh, that's an Airbnb ad. How would I know that? We got the mm -hmm. logo. We got the colors. We got the type. Everything communicates Airbnb to us. And it'll work. Yeah. All right. So another this big is, thing. Yeah. And this is important. We're, we might show another example of this uh, a little bit later, but brand standards are a huge thing. And outside of brand systems, what are brand standards? What are the difference between those two, Nick? So the standards are kind of the rules and the regulations. That's kind of how, how I talk about them when I talk with clients with them. These are a set of guidelines for your color, photography, all the elements, the logo specs, the fonts, everything and it's actually rules it's more like you can only use the logo this way you can't invert it you can't mess with the font and the spacing it has to have a bounding box around it so nothing competes with the logo these are really where you get to shine as the designer as well i always include I'm, i know you do as well like a three to four page brand standard for even the smallest brands i do logos for yes you can't just turn over a logo and cross your fingers they will use other designers. They will use junior designers. They'll send it to a vendor. And that person needs to know the standards. So nothing, it's that consistency. Everything we talked about in the first four or five slides can't happen if the rules are broken. Yep. And it's so important to yeah. communicate your intent instead of just the design as a designer, right? This is the brand standard yeah. manual is how I can tell if someone is a great designer or not. Like if you can make it look good, great. But if you can communicate the intent and the system behind it, that's the magic. Yes. So if you're able to yes. like write the copy for the brand standards, lay it out and communicate very clearly how someone else should do it, um, you should be able to hand off a project to a client and then never talk to them again. Like hopefully you do exactly. want to talk to them again, but you should be able to say, hey, <laughs> yeah. good to go. Good luck. Like uh, everything mm -hmm. is documented here. This is how I think. This is how you should think. This is how you use this. And everything should be documented there in the brand standards. Uh, and and Nick, I think it's safe to say too, rationale should follow every rule you do because you never, yes. if you're challenged with it and you don't have an answer for it. Like I know you've done a few where you didn't just pick yellow to be a category of that brand because it just looked good. You had a reason that yellow was the right representation yes. or that pattern or that grid worked for the thing it was representing. Yep, absolutely. Um, okay, so let's talk about brand standards from not necessarily a visual, but from like yeah. a communication, right? Because it is everything. Brand standards encompass literally everything. Yes. So everything that should be in there. And when I did a little research on this, I realized too, this is the, the, you said the why at the very beginning, what's the, what, what's the big reason Yep. this positioning statement. If you guys need to, this is a great one. This is a, a mad lib basically screenshot this because you'll use this for every start of every project. Basically what's doing is telling the target audience is the, is basically with the brand name that they're using tells me a little bit about the reference of the audience, the category it's in, but more importantly, what is their unique point of difference? Yep. And if 
you this is sit great. down with a client with this, yeah, this is the stuff that you will basically start your whole standards on and everything should really focus and be central to this. So it defines your target audience and how you want the audience to perceive your brand. Every company has this and it becomes maybe their positioning statement or maybe even their motto or their tagline in a lot of ways. Yep. So maybe uh, the, the thing that jumped in my head was like Jack in the Box, right? So mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, uh, college age students, maybe as a target mm -hmm. demographic, Jack in the Box is the fun and Fast unique. Food. Yeah. Fun, destination. Yeah. Yep. That uh, provides uh, unique, tasty late night snacks. Like that could be, that's kind go. of how they're positioning themselves. And so mm -hmm. you should be able to fill this in for another brand. And if you can, that means it's a strong brand. If you can't, that means maybe they need some work, but you should be able to do yeah. that for your clients as you're going through. Um, and, and that last line is the most important one, because like you said, it differentiates them. And if Jack in the Box is doing tasty variety in their treats or late night snacks or whatever it is, they will own that space and no one else, anyone else will just copy them. Yep. Which I think yeah. they, they do. Uh, the yeah. fact that they have a munchy meal is like, yeah, you guys got it. Yes, uh, you got it. All right. So there's a question that just came in that I think is interesting. And Ooh. I think that maybe we can each give our answers to this because I don't think that there's a right answer. Um, can you explain the difference in brand system, brand identity, and brand guide? Oh, yes. Easy. You go. Brand system is, brand system is the elements, right? That is all the individual elements. That's the brand system, right? I'm trying to find the, where's the... Uh, it's Laura. Where's that thing? Laura, Valinto, Romero, uh, a oh, little bit up. there we go. So yeah. that's, the system is basically that. It's all the elements, right? That's the brand system. The brand identity system, I think is really down. Well, those are kind of the same, I would think, right? What do you... You, you keep no going. You really keep going there. and I'll give my answer. Yeah. Okay, so the brand system is everything all together. The brand identity system, I would focus more on the identity, and that might be just logo type driven elements of that system. And then the brand guides are the rules, the regulations, the what to do and what not to do. Okay, so I like My to think answer. of it as the brand identity is who the person is, and then the brand system mm -hmm. is like what they wear, and then the brand guide okay. is like their closet. Right, that it's like here are the options of things. That is the brand, the brand guide. Right, here are the things you can pick from. Mm -hmm. Then we have the brand system. Is like, okay, cool. These are the things that you're wearing that dress up that you've picked from the brand guide. And then the brand identity is who at the core is this person. So I think that's kind of how I like yeah. to break it down. Is they kind of stack on each other, and they do feel similar, and they do have similar names. Um, but I like to think of that uh, kind of as the designator. Uh, yes. All right. So with brand standards, not Love only that. do we have standards for how to communicate, we also have standards of how things look. And this is something that must be yes. included in every brand standard manual logo systems. Yeah. And this is the perfect example. You can look at, you can look at Walmarts and think, wow, it's pretty simple, right? It's a little asterisk with the word and whatever, but this is just one page of probably five or six that talk about the usage of the logo itself, yep. where it can be, where, what color backgrounds are approved for the background, only on white it might say. This is where it tells you the rules and what you can do. They want brand consistency throughout. And I love seeing these kinds of things. There's usually different kinds of ideas of the spacing between and yes. what makes the spacing. Like they might pick an element from the actual logo type and let that be the spacer. So optically it looks good. But to me, I think this is a very smart thing to give to the client because you never want, I always love it when they'll put a white logo over a light yellow background and you're like, maybe I should have told them not to do that, yeah. right? So this is your pot to go, hey, if you do need to put it on, a, I give them a logo for a light background and I give them a logo for a dark background. Yep. And so there's a quick way you can do that as well. Yeah, and I always, always, always use an element from the logo in spacing because no one's going to measure it. And that allows me to be mm -hmm. like, oh, see that M? I want you to do half of an M, like on every side. So then you yes. can just mentally, you're like, I'm putting this on a shirt next to another logo. Cool. Just like look at the M and just like guess, guess at least half of an M. Uh, and so if you can pick something up from the logo and use it there, 100% use that for spacing. It's way better than putting in like 0.25 inches or whatever. Just use a visual. It's way easier. Yes. 
Perfect. All right, so another thing in the body working together of your graphic uh, <laughs> system, right? I'm trying to transition because we're going to talk about the body in a second. Um, this is how I like to <laughs> talk about type. So type is so important to hit every single thing, right? And this is, I like to think of when you go to a chiropractor, right, and they talk about alignment, that it's like they can see if your foot is off to the side, it's because your like back is weird and maybe your neck is tilted. And so everything needs to be in alignment. That's how I think about uh, type hierarchy. And so I kind of have it targeted, but then think about the person. And so when I'm thinking about my yeah. header, uh, which is the H1, as people say, I think that I'm announcing something, right? When we have that header, mm -hmm. we're saying I'm announcing something. Then the next one down to be a subhead or a deck, and that's I'm saying something to someone, right? Uh, and then down below that, a call out, I'm mentioning something, just like a little offhanded remark, just a little, hey, what's up? You know, here's the lecture thing. And then the body copy is that I'm talking to someone. And so as I choose fonts and start to pair them, I don't want to go from, uh, you know, announcing to someone, be like, hey, come over here. And then by the time I get to talking, I'm like, okay, so what we're going to be doing, right? I want something yeah. that, that has, <laughs> has a relation there. Right? You need to continue that conversation all the way down. And so it helps me visually understand how to make a type hierarchy. And you can see over in the corner, right, that we have the big top. Welcome to Lakeside. This is a place for you. Yes. Here's how to start. Let's join a group. And then here we go. And I'm like, cool, here's a little quote on the side, right? You can hear yourself saying it in the way that you can communicate using this type hierarchy. And you want to make sure that everything, again, is in alignment, taking a singular path by using those different pieces of type. Lovely. Great right? way to look at it. For love, sure. I love explaining that to clients and they're like, yes, I mm -hmm. get it. Is it's all about that conversation and just managing. And they'll never question you on it again. Was. Exactly. Yeah. They're like, yes. And I'm like, great. Yeah. Stop talking. All right. Uh, That's the whole point. <laughs> which using those and defining those a different thing, right? So choosing those is one thing and defining those is another thing. So Nick, how do we, uh, how do we define those in a brand standards? Yeah, you like to give the groupings now that you've determined that. I think that's a great thing to go through. Now you pick the fonts, the color that come from the brand standard, come from the system, and give them one or two kind of ways of actually presenting typography with headline, subhead, just like Andrew said in the slide before. But now it's just customized and tweaked to the brand standards that you've created. So giving them some font usage, brand typography, great way to say it. I brought that up to a client on a call today and they were just like, but it's just type. And I'm like, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> it's more this than that. This is a whole page that we will spend a little time with because yes. you will come running back when you have to create some flyer and you're not paying me to do it. You'll love this. Yep. So it's so, get them, so important. Get them on board. Yep. Uh, the other element that you need in there that we'll kind of just brush over real quick color palette. You have to define what colors and more importantly, what colors are going to be used for what things. And Nick, I'm just, Super easy. this is going to be pop quiz for Nick. We, we oh. tell them to do something and we do something in our projects with colors that takes it from being a standard to being a conversation. What do we do with our colors and our brand standards? Oh, we name them. Yes. We give them great names. Yes. Yes. So, it's, so it's, don't just call it red. Yep. Yeah. What would you call I this called one? it tomato. Well, I call it like for the last one we did was a whole vegetable, like veg veggie salad shop. So all the colors were kale, tomato, um, tangerine, like yes. just uniquely ones. The city I just did, we named it after some of the fav favorite streets that run through the city. Yep. So again, great ways to do it. I did the same thing that I looked at their location and it was the gray was fog and then it was pine and it was a uh, yes. golden oh, bridge yeah. and like, that kind of stuff that you're looking mm. for like a conversation so that it becomes unique to them. And again, it just creates that brand. Uh, and here's a oh, great totally. example. And I love this brand so much. I feel like it got a bunch of hate when it came out, but I love it in sure. application. Um, the yeah. Yahoo brand, right? I know, kind of forgotten. Um, I don't use it much often either, but I can appreciate what they did here. But one thing you should do, and you see this in a lot of case studies, obviously, so use it in the brand standards. Show how the logo will be applied to applications, to examples, uh, inside, outside, exterior, interior, products, and merch. Yep. What a great way to do it. You show them that sock. Like, Remember when we saw the balloon in that case study? We're like, adding that to every right graphic standards oh, now. This is Love my life now, trying to get Southwest to pick me up mm -hmm. for merch. This is all that I do exactly. is make mock-ups of Southwest stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I it's important. It. So 
with that, that is the overview of brand standards, how to kind of build each individual piece to keep it in line. And I know it's a stretch, but we wanted to cover some kind of activity kind of thing here in this season. And so kinesiology is the way we went with it, is that each of those individual elements of the brand system works together to function creatively and function uniquely. And we actually yeah. brought on a special guest. Nick, do you, uh, what did our special guest talk about? We're about to cut to that. Oh, it was great. We had a good kind of little conversation over on how you should be doing things for your, is that my, did yeah, my screen Nick, just go? Nick's video screen? exploded. Sorry. Oh, hold on. Let's see. There we go. Wait for it. There he is. Hey, how's it going? So we, we talked everything about what you could do sitting at your desk, standing at your desk. The most important thing you'll hear is movement. And yes. that's the thing we're just not doing enough of. Loved talking to her and uh, great new stuff to kind of spread the word on. Yep, so we helped you get your design in order and now we're gonna help you get your body in order. So let's cut over See? and we are gonna watch uh, an interview and even some exercises with our friend Amy Miller, who is a doctor. Um, and this is your homework, is to do these exercises. We'll be back um, at the end of this interview to talk about what's coming up for Max as well as what's coming up next week. So enjoy, make sure you stand up, get involved, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll be doing it at Especially our desks right as well. And we'll see you guys in just a minute. <laughs> All right, we're back. It's a little bit of a different look. Uh, we have another person in my box. Hello. Hi. Um, please introduce yourself. Who are you? Um, what do you do? All that fun stuff. My name is Amy Miller. I, what am I doing? Oh, I'm, I was pointing. Sorry. Oh. I was pointing at the... <laughs> I thought I was supposed to do something. Um, my name is Amy Miller. I am not typically on shows like this. I teach in the kinesiology department over at California Baptist University, and I also work for Kaiser doing a lot of health education and promotion. Yes. And Kaiser is like a hospital oh, health care yeah. provider in California. Yeah. yeah. Us Californians think that it's <laughs> We think just, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. <laughs> West it's Coast. everywhere. It's <laughs> everywhere. Um, and you just met Nick. Hello. Hi, Nick. Sorry. Yes. Hello. <laughs> What's up, guys? Uh, Nick, here's a question for you to get us started. Mm -hmm. uh, you sit at your desk all the time, all the day, right? All the time. All the yes. days of the year. Um, all the days of the year. <laughs> as as do I. Okay, so we are making a connection. Can you tell Amy a little bit about what we're doing this season and why we're having her on our fourth period show for kinesiology? I'm literally yeah. finding out right now. <laughs> yep. So. Yep. L yes, exactly. Let's explain everything you're seeing here. So <laughs> this whole semester is based on typical things you would have taken in school, typical topics, typical subjects. And this week is all about kinesiology. So we're showing the design side of it, but then Andrew had this great idea to bring you on board and help us talk about, look, we're sitting here at our desks all day. We're not standing enough all those things. What are we doing wrong and how do we get better at it? Yep. So the rest of this that. episode, which you all are seeing, uh, but Amy probably won't see, uh, we're talking <laughs> about brand systems and how every little piece has to work together or else it won't be understood. You have to have the right colors, the right fonts, the right logos, all of it together or else it just kind of falls apart. And I thought that's like the body from mm -hmm. what Amy's told me. Yeah. Um, and so I want to ask you a little bit about things or problems that you would think about or see in people that just like sit at desks mm -hmm. all day. Great. First of all, I'm very relieved to not be having to give any design advice. Yes. Creative <laughs> consultant. Right. But I'm also very happy to, to talk about moving. So, so one of the best things you can do for the body is move, right? So people who sit down all day, one, don't move. <laughs> okay. So, so you, you have, there's this thing called a hypokinetic disease. So it's a disease of not moving enough is okay. essentially what that means. And so if your job is to sit down all day, you're literally not moving all day. Which is so, a disease. Which is a disease. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to label you heard it. Here first. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh dear, yes. I'm now diseased. Our career is a disease. <laughs> um, but, oh, but epic so, proportions. Right. <laughs> but, but so that's a problem. If, if you're not moving enough, there's a bunch of these chronic lifestyle related diseases that come along with. Um, not moving. So number one, number two, we tend to get in these postures, right? Like if you're typing at your desk all day, if you're doing these things, which are really not very good for our spine. So you want to be in an open neutral position. And so then you'll start seeing, uh, right? Everybody sits up tall, yeah, um, but you'll start seeing like pain, <laughs> especially in your um, neck and back that are oftentimes associated with just sitting in this position. I mean, obviously I'm exaggerating right now, but well, sitting in this position. They've seen me in that position yeah. a few times during this show. <laughs> right. But those are probably the two. And I catch ones. myself doing that 
I catch myself doing that all the time. Mm -hmm. it, it, as much as you think you're conscious of it, you could be in that really bad position for a long time. And you tend without to get sucked it. in. So you'll yep. start up here and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're, you know. And something yeah. that's small like that, right? That we're hunching and it like hurts our back a little bit, right? And we're like, oh, mm -hmm. my back, I can like get a massage or whatever. Mm -hmm. It has like consequences to other parts of your body, right? It spreads, right? Yeah, absolutely. How does that work? Because I know that I've heard a friend talk about like this mm -hmm. thing hits this thing and this thing, this right. thing. So your spinal column, right? Your, your vertebrae has all of your bones, but then through there also run all your nerves. Okay. And so it all goes through your spine, but then that goes out to different things. So oftentimes they'll be like, yeah, my arm hurts. I've got this tingling in my arm and really it's a problem with your neck or my leg always yeah. falls asleep. And really it's a problem in your back. So all of the nerves run through the spinal cord and the nerves get feeling to other things. So you're saying, oh, this is such a good segue. So you're saying that every Wait. little piece has to work together to communicate your body well. Yay. The hip bone is connected to the knee bone. <laughs> Literally when we were planning this episode, that's what I thought of. Oh. I was like, oh, just like type is is connected to colors, the hip bone is connected to the knee bone. Mm -hmm. That's true. I don't yeah. get the type and colors yeah. analogy, but I do we'll agree. One. Yes. <laughs> so we want to have you show us some things that if we are sitting all day, uh, mm -hmm. maybe some stuff we can do at our desks, but then maybe mm -hmm. also some stuff that we can do if we want to stand up from our desk and do something. Yeah, absolutely. So where do we start sitting at our desk? And Nick, I think you're going to do this along with us, right? Yes, let's do it. All right, I'm let's ready. cut over to the, the workout screen. This is going to be our workout screen. All right, Amy, Yay. what's the first step? What do okay, we do? Okay, so the first one is super easy. You're just going to stand up and sit back down. So up and then back down. And so what you'll notice, hopefully, easy. is when you sat back down, you sat back down in good posture. I'm right? So nobody, oh, right? So now do oh. it again, right? So nobody sits down like this. Right? You sit oh, down and it good resets posture. you. Mm -hmm. It resets you. So it's just super easy. Perfect. So, what I always recommend is I mean, I don't know if your phones probably aren't ringing throughout the day, but set a timer or something so that it's a regular reminder to stand up and sit back down. And then you'll sit back down almost always in good posture. That's, I've never wow. thought about that. And it's so, like, literally, I did it and you're like, you're in good posture now. Yeah. I was like, I am in good I posture am in good now. Posture. You're right. Cap happening. You gotta capture that. Take a picture. I know. <laughs> but you need to set some kind of reminder or some kind mm -hmm. of visual cue, you know, something to remind yourself to do it because once you're in the zone, you're in the zone and you don't get out of the zone. I love that the Apple Watch does that. You could set it to however long you want it in mm -hmm. increments. A buzz. And it says time to stand. Yes. And yeah, and it's just the, it, I laughed at it at first, but I use it religiously now because. Like, you, like Andrew said, you could be sitting there for hours and not realize how long you've been sitting. So yep. it's a good reminder. Mm -hmm. um, there's apps, I know, as well that do that, but the timer is just the simplest way to do it, yeah. right? Yep. That, I love that. It buzzes if you've got one of those buzzes on your watch yep. or on your wrist and then you stand up, sit down. And literally, you can do squats if you want to, up, down, up, down, up, down, which we are going to do here in a second, yes. right? But nice literally, just stand up and sit down puts you back into that posture, which mm. puts the least amount of pressure on your neck, back, all yep. of those things. So Nick, I know that you're working at a standing desk, right? Yes. And I have a standing desk as well. What about someone who's working at a standing desk? Is it good to stand the entire time? Actually, no. So one of the things everyone they, loses. Right, yeah, right, right. So one of the things they've shown. I can't win. I know, is that standing up for very long amounts of time still isn't good. So we we are supposed to stand, but we are also supposed to sit. So stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down. Or again, you still need to move. So go up and down on your tippy toes or something if you're going to stand up every once in a while. Step go. to the side, do a squat, something like that. But just being in the same posture. Um, all the time isn't good. One of the things you can do if you're standing is put one foot up on like a little step stool. You could stack a couple books or something. Yeah. So one foot's on the ground, one foot, and then you'll just switch every so often. And that again Great helps idea. you kind of, you know. I like the reference of you talking about stepping on books like at a desk and my brain is, it was like, where do you get books? Cause like, I don't think any of us like use books in our career, which is so funny cause That's you're in funny. books all the time. Yeah. I have a lot of books. Yes. Well, um, there's a lot back here. And, I don't, and yeah. all she needs is yeah. one of them. I would need like four magazines right. to actually make a book. Yeah, none of these right? are real books back here. This is just here. a prop bookshelf. <laughs> um, okay. So what kind of exercises can we do other than standing up when we are sitting down here? Okay. So there's two different categories of exercises that I want to talk about. One is strengthening and one is mobility. So notice I didn't say flexibility because very few people actually need to be extremely flexible. Ice skaters, divers, dancers, right? Yeah, they need to be extremely flexible. For most people, we just need to be able to move our body through its full range of motion. So that's what we're gonna do. So first one, we're gonna roll our shoulders backwards. So back and down. 
Now notice, I don't typically roll my shoulders forward because this will put you back in this position. And we don't want to do that. So you're just going to go back uh, and kind of squeeze your shoulder blades together. Mm -hmm. And you just, I mean, you could do it 10 times. You can do it for 15 seconds, whatever you want. The next one we're going to do is we're going to rotate our neck. So keeping your neck in good position, so we're not like this or anything, you're just going to look as far as you can over your left shoulder and as far as you can over your right shoulder. Now look, who can look farther, me or Andrew? Oh. Right? Uh. So, I think you. Oh, think, you got you got him. Got you got him a little. I've, I've been sitting on a, I've yeah. been sitting on a plane all day. <laughs> right, and so you're That's supposed right. to actually be able to get your chin to your shoulder. So if you can't, if you're stuck here, oh. it's a good indicator that you're not sitting in good alignment. So one of the other ones, and this one, I do this in public sometimes, and my husband always says, "You know that people can see you, right?" And I'm like, <laughs> "My neck hurts. I don't care, right?" But so you're gonna tuck your chin back. Okay, so I, yeah, so good. So I'm not looking down. I'm looking. I'm going back. And then I relax. Uh, don't, don't force it oh, forward. Don't force it forward. Yeah, okay. just go back and then relax and back and then relax. And that kind of stretches on the back of your neck for you. And without Ooh, making yeah. you look down like this, which is probably what you're doing all the time anyway. Yep. Right? So, and yes. that you'll notice if you do some of these, you'll actually be able to turn sideways farther. And I think that we do that as designers. So we always have this thing that like, we'll like head tilt mm -hmm. or we'll like sit back a little bit to see mm -hmm. and just do that. Just exercise it. Just right. look like this <laughs> exactly. and then go back and then look like this. It's and the weird, yeah. <laughs> it's like such a weird thing. Like how do you reset that? Because right. I'm doing that all day two long. Bird, two birds, one stone. Just <laughs> turn chicken. it into an exercise. Yes. Right. Okay. So um, we'll call this one the chicken. Yes. We're making up names okay. as we there go. go. And then this one will be the turn and peak. The owl. The owl. Good. Ooh. Love um, it. Okay. Yes. I'm, we're going. See? Yes. Oh. Like it. He's owl. a creative. I know. Good. Okay. And then the next one is you're literally just putting your ear towards your shoulder. Mm -hmm. And this one I can't do very well. Oh. You can see Andrew's got me beat on this one. Same. This one will be the dodo. <laughs> right. There you go. That one totally That's so tight. Yeah. It's so funny that mm -hmm. you it, we here we are we spent the whole day probably all of us doing our normal thing mm -hmm. and just as something as simple as that you can feel how tight you are because you did not give it any right. you didn't give it any love all day today. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. you're doing it for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And so you'll notice stretching. We used to tell people stretch and hold. As long as you're moving through your full range of motion, that's actually it appears to be a little bit better. It's at least what we believe. Because it's just now. mobility, it's not mobility. necessarily flexibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to be able to move. You don't have to be able to to, you know, put your ear way over there. Yes. Um, Perfect. All right. Do we want to stand and try some stuff? Yeah, sure. All right, Nick, we're probably going to lose you because we can't have our headphones in when we stand back. Yes, Nick's ready. Look at that. He's yeah, just I'm like, ready. all right, let's do it. Namas right. Namaste. Let's go. Yes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise up my desk, uh, which is another great thing, Perfect. right? If we're standing and sitting, we can go up uh -huh. and down. So we're going to raise up the desk just so we have a different shot. Ooh. Goodbye, everyone. All right. And let's go back and we'll just have you talk loud and I'll pull the mic out. Okay. So are we Perfect. taking our earphones out? Uh, yes. Okay. Oh. All right, there we go. All right. Okay, so again, you don't have to do anything intense. I'm not going to make you do burpees or anything here, but you do want to move. So depending upon your fitness level, you can do things as simple. I'm going to turn sideways so you can see. As simple as march. Okay? Yeah. Knees? Knees yeah. up. And try to get your knees up to about halfway and then now go slower. And as you go down, you should feel that in your core to yes. have to control it and you <laughs> and your balance <laughs> and you don't want to bend over to get your knee higher and you don't want to lean back to get your knee higher you're literally keeping your trunk straight and then just getting your knee up and you'll feel Great. your core engage so a strong core and not just abs but a strong core takes some of the pressure off of your spine so muscles should do the work not the bones Oh, interesting. That's an interesting thought. Ooh, yeah. Muscles, not bones, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the next one you can do is literally a squat. So you can do this mm -hmm. multiple different ways. I'm going to scoot back so you guys can see my knees. A traditional squat, your feet are about hip width apart and you just drop down. Okay. If that hurts your knees, put your feet wide and point your knees out and you're going to do a sumo squat. Okay, so feet mm. even wider than that. See, Andrew's heels just came off the ground. So make a, yeah, make a white, yes. So you want your heels to stay. You want your heels to stay on the ground. So if your heels come up, that's wrong. <laughs> okay, so you can either do a wide leg squat, takes a little bit more of the pressure off of your knees, or you can do just a regular squat as you go. And again, you don't have to do a ton of these. You can do 10 of them once every hour, once every other hour, does it, right? You're, you're just getting up and moving, building some kind of um, strength in your legs. Another one you can do, it's pretty simple. I mean, you don't have to do these in any particular order. It really is just pretty simple. So you could like take your legs out. Oh, I just fell over. Okay, you can take your legs uh -huh. out to the side, right? So I'm standing on one leg 
and I'm balancing. So again, so that I don't fall over, I have to use my core to keep me stable, but I'm also using my legs, right? I'm working my hips. Switch to the other leg. One that I like to do that's kind of like this is if I'm standing at my desk, I like to pretend that I'm in a band and I'll do some of these and I'll just like power stance and I'm like going back and forth, like doing a little, a little lunge. sway, a little yeah. side lunge. Yeah, I like the band analogy, but side lunge. So that was actually the next one I was going to do was okay. a backwards lunge. Oh. So when people, a lot of times people Whoa. get knee pain when they do lunges because they don't do them right. But if you just take a big giant step backwards and then step together, one, it works on your balance, two, it doesn't hurt your knees. Okay. Right, let's get let's let's drop this just a little that. bit. There we go. All okay. right. So you ready? So I'm gonna just take a big step backwards, and then back together. I'll step out. I'll scoot out from the. There we go. So I'm not behind the microphone. Okay, and I'll do it from the side too. I'm literally just stepping backwards. And you can even just take a big step, right? If you are not so coordinated or strong it's like you don't a, have to go drop all the way to the ground you're just moving engaging your legs what was that movie to where she was like super stop i think that was it yeah <laughs> yeah that's it basically Catherine, right Mary yeah. Catherine, same thing. It, that same is thing. exactly it so please yes. add your hands in and do a couple superstars <laughs> as, as oh, that you're was doing insane. <laughs> just the more funny yeah. all right one more oh, one, one more, more one more sorry it's super easy and especially if you're at okay. your standing desk just go up and down on your toes right it gets those calf muscles working helps get the the pump flow into And if you have a book, it, can you put a book under mm -hmm. your toes and then kind of yep. hyperflex? Extend. I made that up. Yeah. I made that word you up. Into dro it drops your heels below your toes. That's <laughs> yes. how. And you can do straight toes or you can do toes out to get different parts of your calf. But then you've got your calf, you've got your quads, your high hamstrings, your glutes, you got all of them, the sides of your hip. So it's all the major muscles in your legs. You don't have to do a ton. Stick with 10. Work up to 20 if you want to. Yeah. Um, I also love the people that are probably like just randomly coming along this stream and they're like, this, wait a minute, I thought this was like a design, design. website. Uh, no, we're what a little bit everything. What are these two guys doing now? <laughs> right? Welcome to Office Hours, everybody. Um, all right. Well, love Amy, it. any parting thoughts for our audience of things they can maybe do today that they can mm -hmm. work on real quickly? Any parting thoughts? Yeah. Okay. So two th one thing, really, do, do this. You need to move. Moving is the most important. Yeah. So if you're like, I hate squats and lunges, no way am I doing squats and lunges. Yes. Totally fine. Just get up and walk down your stairs and walk back up, right? So the more steps you can accumulate throughout the day, the better it is. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to teach you guys real quick here. I'm not letting yes. you leave without this. Knowledge. So the current recommendations are nice. 150 minutes of aerobic activity each week. That seems overwhelming, but it doesn't have to be in a row. So you can literally do 10 minutes 15 times throughout the day, sorry, throughout the week five minutes, nice. 30 times throughout the week. You just have to get there. So pick a way that's reasonable. If you're saying, I don't have time to go to the gym for 50 minutes, three days a week, that's fine. Walk for 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes at lunch, 10 minutes after work, on, yep. right? And you get it in there. But the more you move, the less you hurt. Which, thank you for doing this interview instead of going for a run, which is <laughs> going to happen. Uh, yes. So we're taking, we're taking away some of your minutes. And, uh, I hope okay. that you get them back. <laughs> I'll get up and do it in the morning. <laughs> yes. Well, thanks for yeah. being here. Uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, we'll cut back to the live show um, with Nick and Andrew, probably in different outfits. Thanks, Amy. Uh, thanks, Amy. <laughs> it was yeah, so probably. nice. Thank you, guys. Bye. So you've heard of Adobe Sensei technology. I think that Amy is our Adobe Sensei. I think that that's what, what's just happened. Yes, Sensei, and Namaste. <laughs> right? Uh, it feels right. So we had a couple questions come in there that we want to answer real quick before we get into yes. what's happening in Max and what's happening next week. Nick, what are the questions that came in that we want to address yeah. uh, from uh, Garrett, our you had fitness? Wrote, yeah, you had wrote that, uh, what are the best exercises for wheelchair use? And I think a lot of the ones she had up front there, anything sitting was probably good to kind of think and maybe even try. But it might be even good to look those up. I think I'm assuming everything else you can do regardless of uh, the situation you're in, um, hand and like wrist and neck, those are a big one for both of us, right? I mean, like I'm, I, I love seeing everybody's comments about them snap, crappily and popping. That was awesome. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, and then we had one other question that came in that was more related to the brand system side of things um, yes. that we talked about earlier. What was that question that came in about color? This is from Hamza and he says, he has a question about how can I choose color for my type of business? Every business is different from one to another, how or which would your method or strategy be for that? What do you, what do you do? I always look at color theory. 
Um, and then I look at things. A, a lot of times, if it's a location-based thing, I'll look at color themes yes. that are happening around the location. So the colors of houses, the colors of foliage, I'll try to pull something from that and make it unique so that it has a story that is unique to them. Love that. What about you? I've been using everything that I, I pull from uh, that archetypes book. This will tell you if you've picked an archetype for your brand or even a personal, this could be a personal brand of yours, it gives you some ideas of what colors work great for that brand archetype, being who you're trying to attract and what colors work for there. But then I like to tweak them, like you said, to something very specific about the brand, maybe the location or something that inspired that brand from the very beginning. Yep. So great question for sure. Great Love questions. Uh, and yes, I will mm -hmm. pass along all these comments to Amy. Uh, she's currently downstairs. So I'll oh, pass yeah. those along to Amy. I'm sure that she'll oh. be just ecstatic to hear that all of you guys liked it. Uh, and hopefully you can share this with your friends. Uh, grab a timestamp yeah. and share at that timestamp once this is up on YouTube. Uh, and you can all just be doing weird neck things together, okay, standing yeah. up, sitting down. And uh, yes, totally. Nick's, Nick has a this book. Is this is a book all about desk bound and why sitting is so crazy. And I mean, this is a book book. Look at this. Like, it's not like a little a leaflet, book book. but it's uh, something really interesting to look up. It's by Kelly Starrett, I believe. And um, great exercises as well. Um, it's the whole reason I got a standing desk after reading that. So yes. great, great additional reference. All right. So with that, that concludes our kinesiology class. Who thought that that would ever happen? Ooh. Who knew that this is what you're going to get on office hours? But that's the fun part. You never mm -hmm. know what to expect, which leads us to our next thing. That's right. Oh, office nice hours segue. is going to max, baby. <laughs> Uh, welcome to to the max with office hours. You can actually subscribe to our calendar right there, bit.ly slash ohcal. It will update you every time that a show is going live on Friday, as well as our max schedule. Now it's not up yet, but it will be going up this weekend to have all of the things for the max. We're gonna give you a exclusive sneak peek of what's happening at max. Nick, do you wanna talk a little bit about our schedule as I put it up here and kind of walk our oh. friends through? Man, we have just got a jam-packed week going for you guys. Uh, there is Monday that I believe this is your max challenge at 8 a.m. for sure, right? Oh, yes. Let me move this so that it's not cut there off. Go. There we Sorry. go. Sorry. Got there it. There we are. Love it. Beautiful. So Monday, 8 a.m. max challenge happening on October 25th, leading into Tuesday. We are going to start the day off at 8 a.m. with a max your max. So we're going to do everything we can to help you guys put together a really great schedule, what to make sure you hit, all the cool stuff ready. Yep. And then to cap it off, we're gonna do a daily recap and that's gonna be on Discord as well yes. at 5 p.m. Great kind of recap on the whole day. So we will be your guides for the entirety of Adobe Max. We will be happening, um, uh, I believe, on Behance in the morning before Adobe Max starts so that you can get fully prepared, ready to go. And then at the end of the day, we'll be on Discord doing a full Max recap, hanging out with everybody, which will be super fun. And we have something very special happening on Wednesday. Um, so in between the morning and night sections, we have live commentary on Adobe Sneaks. It's going to be so much fun. We'll We'll all be hanging out doing a watch party together in Discord. Um, and Nick and I will be doing some live commentary, giving our thoughts on things as we watch Paul Tranny and Kenan Thompson premiere some of the new things that are happening with Adobe, which is going to be very fun. This is something I think you and I have probably independently both dreamed of doing and oh, yes. probably did while sitting in the audience at Max. So yes. To do this uh, live on um, Discord is going to be a blast with all you guys. Yep. So, so this is our schedule. Screenshot it. We'll be sharing on social media soon. We want to give you guys a sneak peek um, to what is coming. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Um, a mm -hmm. lot of stuff. And again, you can subscribe to that calendar right here, bit.ly slash ohcal. And that's going to give you all of the information. It will just put it straight on your calendar once I update it this weekend. We're still approving some things, still getting some things sorted out, but we'll keep you updated as we continue to go. And yes, it's going to be hilarious and wild. Um, all right, Love Nick, it. one other thing that's happening very special next week. What is happening next week for our show? First time we've ever done it. It's a full-on pre-done show for our theater topic, yes. which we'll be doing and airing next week. So It's so good that we had to do some stuff in advance. It's true. So we are going to yeah. be um, watching together as if it is a premiere. Uh, so we have a fully recorded episode happening next week for Office Hours, same time, same place, but with a mm -hmm. very special twist. Uh, Nick and I will not be live, which allows us to hang out in Discord with you. And so we'll be hanging out in Discord, doing live commentary, having conversation. Making fun of each other. Making fun of each other during that episode. <laughs> 
episode. So we want to make sure that you are all joining our Discord, which is right over here, um, discord.gg slash ACC. And we'll be hanging out live in Discord next week as we all watch episode, uh, as we all watch Office Hours together. I don't think I've ever watched an episode of Office Hours, Nick. <laughs> Oh, you haven't? I, I don't think so. I think this will be my first like oh, watching wow. through an episode of Office Hours because I'm always here for them. Uh, so we'll be there you all go. watching together, which will be super fun and talking in Discord. We'll make a note of that during the show as well. So make sure that you have joined our Discord, subscribe to the calendar, and that you are doing your exercises. Um, and I think yes. that might be it, Nick. What are we talking about next week? That's a that's the thing. What's next week's topic? Oh, yeah. It's going to be everything about the theater of design and preps prepping the scene getting the you name it you oh you add the color bro yep. this is this yeah is you. so we're gonna be <laughs> we're gonna be working all about world building and talking about details how they make a big difference we're gonna spend a ton of time talking about disney and how the smallest little details can make a huge difference uh, and we'll be breaking down a lot how the context can help to inform the content and how you can incorporate that into your projects to make them a little more theatrical so uh yes. join us next Ooh. week we'll be hanging out nice in discord one. watching live together um and this is a little little test for what you're going to be seeing at max and yes elizabeth's going to close us out today with the phrase yes. do your exercises and drink your water and we'll see you next week on office hours in discord bye bye guys <laughs>